just really began in ceramics when after the first time I had thrown a pot because I understood immediately that it was going to be that it wasn't easy that it was going to take a lot of practice and a lot of time and I just saw right from the beginning many years ahead of me of like of struggle basically and and practice and that was exciting so that was kind of the main interest also of course the community in Santa Cruz of ceramics and all the other people that were into it some of my friends being into it with me at the time that was a big part of wanting to start and pursuing it and now I've been doing it for about six years and and they say it takes 10 to 15 years to make a, a potter so I'm just about halfway there in the beginning we purchase a ton of clay, a literal ton of 2,000 pounds of clay from our local ceramic supply store, Phoenix Ceramics. And it comes in 25 pound blocks, 25 pound bags of clay. We um, unwrap the clay from the plastic and we use a wire tool to cut the clay into comfortable sizes, maybe between five to 10 pounds. And then we um, take those pieces and wedge them on a plaster wedging table that that the clay doesn't stick to because the plaster is porous and it soaks up some of the moisture of the clay. And the reason we wedge the clay is to um, align all the, the plates and the molecules in the clay because when they when they come in the bags they're just stiff. They're just they've been pugged out of a, a square pug mill and, and, and everything is just kind of stiff and and so so by wedging the clay into a spiral you're actually kneading like dough like spiraling all the little molecules and plates of the clay into an like even formation to kind of get ready for the for what's going to be happening on the wheel and and then depending on what we're making we just weigh weigh the clay out into certain size balls so that we maybe we use a uh, one pound of clay for a small mug with a handle or three pounds for something like a, a bottle form and and then we throw it on the wheel we center the clay on the potter's wheel then there's a, a going inward to the clay and then a pulling pulling out and um, forming the bottom of the piece and and strengthening what's going to be the bottom of the piece and then from there it's over on the side we're um, putting pressure on the outside and actually getting underneath the hand on the inside of the pot and and lifting the, the walls of the pot maybe within three or four or five passes lifting and shaping and the walls in the form of the piece So after the after the pot is thrown on the on the wheel, we set them aside for anywhere from a couple hours to a couple weeks, depending on the weather and the humidity. Um, in the summertime, the pottery dries out faster, and we're able to start decorating much quicker. But in the winter time, we put things in a damp box, and they last for weeks. And we can just slowly throw and build up more pottery, and just slowly get around to the decoration process. After the pot is decorated um, and it fully dries and all the moisture is released from the piece, um, that's what we call bone dry. And then it goes into a bisque firing, which is a lower, a lower firing. Usually we fire around 1800 degrees. Um, the pots come out of the bisque firing and they have a, a ting to them, but they're still porous. They still would soak in water, or water would actually still leach through the bisqued pot. Basically the glazed materials are a bunch of ground up 
crystals and clays and minerals, um, just all creating these almost like a liquid crystal glass that you mix with water. What I love most about ceramics is the unpredictability and kind of the the awe, the moment the kiln opens up and and just you never you never know what's going to happen. And I think that's probably the most intriguing thing about ceramics is is that unpredictability. When you're painting on a canvas, you you can see every color that you're putting on the canvas and you can see and depending on what you practice, you can you know how you're how you move and how you flow and what your strokes look like but with clay everything is going through this intense transformational process in the kiln with heat and pressure and uh, material and mineral and crystal reactions and so it's just kind of that will never get old that's gonna always be just the like the most awe-inspiring part of it but then I guess on another side of it the is probably the people that it's connected me with um, the ceramic community seems to be just open arms across the world I mean there's definitely like potters that keep to themselves but it seems as if like as it's just very open like no matter where you go there's gonna be like clay clay people that that want to collaborate and, and share their ideas and share their glazes and share their process and so I think also it's it would have to be the people that um, the people that I've been able to meet and, and be around are also um, very inspiring. Um, you can find my ceramic work and, and my friend's ceramic work uh, in Santa Cruz at the downtown farmer's market every Wednesday. We've just been offered a permanent position at the market on Wednesday downtown. So this year we'll probably be there every Wednesday. My email address is tomwatsonceramics at gmail.com and you can find me on Instagram at tombala, T-O-M-B-H-A-L-A. -A.